Hello everyone. Today we continue with computer system architecture course and our topic is pipelining. In the previous video, we discussed parallel processing. Pipelining is a technique of decomposing a sequential process into sub-operations, with each sub-process being executed in a special dedicated segment that operates concurrently with all other segments. A pipeline can be visualized as a collection of processing segments through which information flows. Segment one, segment two, etc. segment N. Each segment performs partial processing dictated by the way the task is partitioned. The result from each segment is transferred to the next segment and the final result is obtained from the last segment. The use of pipeline in computers is similar to the use of assembly line in industry. The pipeline organization will be demonstrated by means of a simple example. Suppose that we want to perform the combined multiply and add operations with a stream of numbers AI multiply by BI plus CI for I equals one, two, three, seven and even more. Each sub operation is implemented in a segment within a pipeline. We have five registers Registers R1 are used to receive the new data with every clock pulse. And the multiplier and the adder are a combination of logic circuits to perform the multiply and the add operations. The sub-operations performed in each segment of the pipeline is as follows. AI and BI are applied to registers R1 and R2. Next, the contents of R1 and R2 are multiplied and the result is stored in R3. And at the same time, CI is applied to R4. Next, the contents of R3 and R4 are added together to obtain the final result in R5. Suppose, for example, that we have the following stream to be calculated using the pipeline. At the first stage, we have TR2, TR3, and TR4. Next, 2 is multiplied by 3. Here we have 6 and 4 here. And at the same time, we'll have here five, the next stream, seven and six. On the next clock cycle, we'll have here six plus four, ten. And this is the final result of this operation. And here, Five multiplied by six in the multiplier, 35, and here six. And at the same time, here we have eight, three, two. So here's 10. At the next clock cycle, we'll have here 41, which is 35 plus six. And here we'll have 24 and here too. And at the same time, we'll have here six, three, seven. So this is the next output. At the next clock cycle, we'll have here 26. 
24 plus 2, here 6 multiplied by 3, 18, and here 7. And we haven't here any more inputs. So this is the next output. And at the next clock cycle, we'll have here 25. And if you have more inputs, you continue in a similar manner. You can note from the general structure of a pipeline that at the first stages, the first segments will be busy, but the segments at the end will be idle. And at the end of processing, the end segments will be busy but the first segments will be idle. But if the pipeline is full, at each clock pulse, you will receive the next output. Here are the contents of registers at each segment for a stream A1, B1, C1, till A7, B7, C7. In clock pulse 1, A1, B1 are applied to R1. Here we have nothing. On the next clock pulse, A1, B1 are multiplied, and C1 is transferred to R4. But at the same time, we'll have in R1, R2, A2, B2. On the next clock pulse, a1 multiplied by B1 are added to C1 here. And at the same time, A2, B2 are multiplied on the multiplier circuit, and C2 is transferred to R4. And at the same time, A3, B3 are applied to R1, R2. At the end of clock pulse 9, you will receive the last result, A7 multiplied by B7 plus C7. This figure shows the general structure of a four-segment pipeline. In each segment, we have a combinational logic circuit that performs a sub-operation over the data stream flowing through the pipeline. The segments are separated by registers here, RI, registers are used as buffer to hold the intermediate results between the, the segments or the stages. Information flows between the adjacent segment under the control of a common clock pulse. We define a task as the total operations performed going through all the segments in the pipeline. Usually the behavior of a pipeline is demonstrated using a space-time diagrams. Horizontally we have the time in clock cycles and here we have the segment number. In this diagram we have six tasks T1 through T6. Initially task T1 is handled by segment 1 and all the other segments are idle. The next clock cycle, T1 is handled by S2, and at the same time, on segment one, we have T2. On the next clock cycle, T1 is handled by segment three, T2 by segment two, a new task, T3 is received by segment one. As you see, the first task T1 is completed after four clock cycles. And from now on, the pipeline completes a task every clock cycle. On T5, we complete T2, on T6, T3, etc. In general, Consider we have a K-segment pipeline. 
سترا سيجما كي ان سبوز ذات دي كلاك سايكل تايم ايكوالز تي بي ان سبوز وي هاف ان تاسكس دي فيرست تاسك تي 1 requires a time equals to k tb after the first task is completed we'll have at the end of the pipeline another task so the remaining in minus one task will be computed after a time equals to n minus 1 multiplied by tb. Therefore, the total time requires to complete all the tasks equals k tb plus n minus 1 multiplied by tb, which is k plus n minus 1 TV clock cycles. Now consider a non pipeline unit to perform the same operation. Assume that the time to complete each task is Tn, then the total time to complete all the tasks in a non pipeline unit equals to n multiplied by Tn. The speed up ratio is can be calculated in Tn, the time required on a non pipeline unit over k plus n minus 1 multiplied by Tb. You see here as n increases, this value can be considered as n. In this case, the speed up ratio equals NTN over NTB, which is TN over TB. Next, if we assume that the time it takes to process a task is the same in the pipeline and then pipeline system, then TN equals KTB and the speed up ratio will be k. And really this is the maximum speed up that can be achieved using a pipeline system. Again, k is the number of segments. In practice, the maximum speed up ratio cannot be achieved. This is because we need different time in each segment. It's the ideal case that the time is equal, but usually the times in segments are not equal. And in this case, the clock cycle must be chosen to equal the maximum of TPIs. This means that the clock cycle will be set to TB max and J segment will be ideal for this amount of time. And this is a waste of time. As a numerical example, suppose that the time required for each sub-operation is 50 nanoseconds. And assume that we have six segments in the pipeline. And we have, for example, 200 tasks the pipeline system will take k plus n minus 1 multiplied by tb which is 6 plus 200 minus 1 multiplied by 50 and this is 10,250 while a non-pipeline system requires 
for 200 tasks, 200 multiply by 50 multiply by 6. If we assume that the time in all segments is equal, and this is 60,000 nanoseconds. Here we have nanoseconds as well. In this case, the speed up ratio equals 60,000 over 10,000, which is about 585. The result always here should be less than K. As N increases, we approach to K. In the next videos, we will discuss the arithmetic and instruction pipelines. For today, that's all. Thank you.